What, and under some one person who organised it all? Yes, Peter Rogers. I've heard that he thought, let's, let's have a, a film of a team of people, of all these funny people on radio. And that's where we all met up. There was Charlie Hawtrey, Kenneth Williams, myself, and uh, Harold Behrens, so oh, Dick Emery. All of that time were going strong. And a lot of us came together for the first film. Did you have any inkling at the time that it would become so popular? Because all the 31, as you say, have, have really well, taken off into people's imaginations. Yes, the first one was vastly enjoyable because of all the marching and things. We went to a, a proper barracks and things to march around for the passing up parade and things. And your mother just said, we're well, a few years of leaving the army. And the second and third files were made up by actors who had only just left doing their national service. So all that square bashing was quite a delight to do. Were they fairly low-budget films in those days? Microscopic, I should think. <laughs> did, they, did you have to work under a particular duress? Was it all to be done in a few weeks? No. Or? No, I've never worked under duress at all. <laughs> I've always found a way of enjoying oneself. These, of course, were black and white, these early ones, and mm. many of the, the ones that have just been released on video are black and white. But then there was the onset of colour. What do you remember about the first colour one? What was that, that was cruising, called? wasn't it? Cruising, yes. Mm. Mm. Do you remember one, yes, one there? thing I remember about that was Lance Percival. Was he a cook? I think he was. And I was the ship's doctor, and I had to give him an injection for some reason or other. And I said, hold on, whilst I go and fill the hypodermic. But what I did on the shot, I did tell the cameraman, I went out, picked up the hypodermic, and instead of coming back through the same door where he was expecting me to come from, I came th through another one and plunged the needle straight up <laughs> the back, you see. And that was cut to the uh, siren of the vessel. Uh, sounding. Yes. But yes. he was quite uh, amazed, though. Stunned, I would think. Yes, really. and hurt, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it, it is that, that people have such a fondness for the carry ons? I mean, uh, my favourite line out of all of them was I think it was carry on Cleo, where Kenneth Williams had to say, um, Infamy, infamy, they've all got it infamy. I think everybody's got that sort of fam favourite line that they remember. Why do you think that sort of really grabbed people? Oh, that's typically British, though, isn't it? The seaside postcard is what I always refer to. They're beautifully coloured. The drawings are magnificent. The joke is brief and to the point. You either like them or you don't. But they're fairly smutty, aren't they? I mean, the innuendo is fairly yes, strong. But, I mean, it's a waste of time walking through life avoiding smut or pretending you know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've turned it to your advantage as a career. You started off, though, as a, as a proper actor, did you not? Not as a, uh, as a comedy actor. You started off winning the gold medal at your, your Central School of Drama. Well, there was comedy attached to that as well. But, of course, they say comedy is, is hard work, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are many degrees of comedy. The comedy of life. It's, it's tremendous. It's a tremendous study. One never finishes learning about it at all. But did you start off thinking you were going to be a straight, legit actor? No, never. No. Just, I always had that <coughs> appreciation of it. Come in and enjoy it. And that's what I've been doing. Hope it continues. Of course, you're now into a, what a sort of 1980s mm. carry-on type epic, the Allo Allo series, yes. as well. Is that is that similar in a way yes. to the making? Because it's like it's like a little rep company doing a different plot every week. That's isn't right. It? In many ways, it is similar. There's a a madness and a delicacy of the style of humour of the thing. I think it's going to be therapeutic now that we're members of the. The common market and things, and all these Germans and French and Italians and English and God knows what, all coming together. And we do know the French have bought the programme, haven't they? Yes, I heard that. They're d they've dubbed it over into it, French. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do they manage that? That I sounds don't know. extremely confusing I'm, to me. I'm dying to know. How they <laughs> and you, you're going to make a new series, presumably? Next year, another lot are going to be done, yes, so we've been informed. Well, but uh, there they are. I'll give you that one. Oh, thank you very much. This I'll is look, a video of I'll look the forward on. to that. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenneth Connor. Well, one of the musical highlights of the festival is turning out to be the Lambeth Community Youth Steel Band. Now, they're taking part in the Panorama Steel Band Championship in London tomorrow. But before we go, we'll leave you with them in festival mood here at the Glasgow Garden Party.